is part 73 of C-sharp tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using dictionary object in C-sharp. This is continuation to part 72. So please watch part 72 before proceeding with this video. In this video, we'll discuss these four methods, try get value, count, remove and clear. We'll also discuss using link extension methods with dictionary. And finally, we'll look at different ways to convert an array into a dictionary. Let's flip to Visual Studio. We'll be using the same example that we started in part 72. So here we have a customer class with three auto-implemented properties. And in the main method, we are creating three instances of that customer class. And then we created a dictionary and we added these customer objects as values within the dictionary and the respective customer IDs as keys. Now let's look at using this try get value function. First of all, when do we use this function? If you're not sure if the dictionary contains a specific key, that's when we use this function. And what does this try get value function returns as the name states? It's going to return a value that is associated with a key. And there are several ways to do that. In the previous session, you know, we discussed one of the ways to get a value that is associated with a, uh, with a specific key is by using, uh, you know, something like this. So look at this when we pass this key 101, um, you know, what is it going to return? It's going to return a customer object because this dictionary contains, um, I mean, the value within this dictionary is a customer. So we get a customer back. This is one way. But then if I use this approach and if that key doesn't exist within the dictionary, then we are going to get an exception. So if you're not sure, you know, if the dictionary contains a specific key, and if that key doesn't exist, if you don't want to get an exception, then use try get value. So let's see using try get value function. If you notice this try get value function, it expects two parameters. The first parameter is the key. Okay, so I want to get the value for this key. So that's going to be the first parameter. And if that key is found, you know, the second parameter, look at the parameter type, it's customer. Okay, because the value within the within this dictionary is customer. Okay, so the type is customer here. So whatever parameter that we are going to pass here is going to receive the value that is associated with that key. Okay, and notice that it's an output parameter. Okay, because we are going to get the value back. We are not going to give it a value, but we are going to get it, get a value. So let's go ahead and create an an object reference variable of type customer and then let's pass it as a second parameter. So this reference variable is going to receive the value that is associated with that key. And since this is an output parameter, we have to have out keyword in front of that. Okay, and notice the return type of this function from the IntelliSense. What is it returning? It's returning a Boolean, meaning a true or a false. If there is a key, 101 within the dictionary, then this method is going to return true. Okay, since the return type is Boolean, we can use this in an if condition. Okay, so if this key is found, this function is going to return true, and this parameter is going to receive the value that is associated with that key. In that case, we want to print the details associated with that customer. So I want to print their ID. their name and their salary. So where are we going to get the ID from? From the customer object. So customer.id, customer.name and customer.salary. All right. Now, if this key doesn't exist in the dictionary, then what's going to happen? This function will return false and this parameter will be null, okay? So in that case, we want to print a message stating the key does not exist within the dictionary. Maybe the key is not found. All right, now, do we have an item with that key within the dictionary? Yes, we do. In fact, the first object has got ID 101. So let's go ahead and run this and see if we get the output that we expect. Okay, look at that, we have the details of that customer. Okay, now, on the other hand, if I pass something like 111, we don't have an item with that key, so it should come to the else block 
and say the key is not found. But the important thing to keep in mind here is we don't get an exception. All right. Now let's look at using this count function. First of all, when do we use this function? Now as the name states, if you want to find the total count of all the items that is present within the dictionary, then we use that count function. Actually, there are two ways to find the total number of elements that are present in a dictionary. One is to use the count property. So this dictionary class exposes a property, count property, and look at the return type, it's integer. So it's going to return the total number of items within the dictionary. So let's say we want to print something like total items equals So now as you might expect when we run this we should get total items equal 3. So here we are using this count property and this is defined within the dictionary class itself. Now instead of using count property I can also use count function. Okay. Now where is this count function present? It's actually present in a different namespace. So if I right click on that and if I go to the definition look at that this is first of all an extension method. Look at that it's a static method and the first parameter is of type this and this method should be present in a static class so this is definitely an extension method on i enumerable class and look at the namespace it's present in system.link meaning this is a link extension method so we are using a link extension method on a dictionary object so when we run this we should get the same output total items equals 3 now there are two overloaded versions of this count function. The one that we have just used, you know, doesn't take any parameters, but there is the second overloaded version where we can specify a predicate. Okay. And let's say, for example, I want to find the total count of employees where the salary of the employees is greater than 4,000. Okay. Now, if you look at the customers that we have here, there are two employees whose salary is greater than 4,000 customer 1 and customer 2. So I want to find the count of all such employees and we can e very easily achieve that using this count function. Okay. Now look at this. We are using an extension method on this dictionary and then we are going to pass a predicate here. Okay. Now since we are using this count function on a dictionary, you know, when I say key value pair here, so key value pair such that key value pair dot so basically what we are doing is we are passing you know this predicate here okay so what I want to do is we are using this count function on this dictionary so we are going to get a key value pair access to the key value pair that is present within the dictionary object and we want to find the value so what is value value is nothing but the customer object itself so and then this value will have all the properties of the customer. So ID, name, salary, because this value itself is nothing but a customer object. Now what we want to do is, you know, key value pair such that key value pair dot value dot salary should be greater than 4000. So if this condition evaluates to true, then that employee will be included in the count, otherwise he will be excluded. So when we run this, we should get the total count as 2 because we have only two employees whose salary is greater than uh, 4,000. Similarly, you can include any condition you want. Maybe, you know, I want the count of all employees whose name starts with uh, maybe letter S. You know, you can give any condition. So any expression that you give here should have to evaluate to true you know, if that has to be included in the count, if it evaluates to false, then it will be excluded from the count. All right. Now let's discuss using remove function. So anytime you want to remove an item from a dictionary, then you use remove function. So obviously, let's say at the moment, this dictionary has got, you know, three items. And let's say I want to remove an item which has got this key 110. And to do that, we simply say dictionary customers dot remove, and then you specify the key of the uh, item. So 110 should remove that from the dictionary. Okay. What is going to happen if I specify a key that does not exist? Uh, basically, if the item with that key doesn't exist, then you wouldn't get an exception and nothing happens. So that's fine. All right. 
So the next function that we discuss is clear. Now, if you want to remove all items from the dictionary, so remove will remove one item from the dictionary, but if you want to remove all items from the dictionary, then you use clear. So when you use clear, look at the IntelliSense, it states remove all keys and values from the dictionary. So it's going to remove everything. Okay. And then we have seen using link extension methods with dictionary. And finally, let's look at the different ways to convert an array into dictionary. Now, at the moment we have, you know, we can get rid of this dictionary. So at the moment, we have created three customer objects here. Now let's create a customer array. So customer, and let's call this maybe customers equals new customer array. And I want to hold, let's say, three elements within that array. Okay, so we can basically say customers of zero equals customer one. And similarly within the first location, we want to store customer two. And then here maybe customer three. Okay, now we have an array here. Now can we convert an array into a dictionary? Absolutely. All you need to do is on that object, so customers dot to dictionary. Look at that, you have this to dictionary method. So simply call this to dictionary method. And then obviously when you want to convert an array into a dictionary or let's say for example when you want to create a dictionary there are two things that we need to specify what is the key for the dictionary and what is the value okay so obviously when we are converting an array into a dictionary we need to specify that as well so all the objects that I have in this array I want to convert them in, into a dictionary type okay so here the customer objects is stored in an array but I want now to store them in a dictionary and obviously when if we want to create a dictionary we need to specify the key and the value okay now so here I'm saying so each employee or customer such that the ID is going to be I mean the key is going to be ID of the customer and then I am saying value is going to be customer okay so here basically what we are saying is the key is going to be customer ID and the value is going to be customer object itself okay so now let's actually loop through let's so this two dictionary is going to return a dictionary back so let's store that in a dictionary so the key is going to be integer and the value is going to be of type customer and let's call this maybe dictionary okay now let's say if we have got all the items within that dictionary and to verify that let's use a for each loop so for each so what's the dictionary again dictionary is a collection of key value pairs so we're going to say for each key value pair integer and customer and let's call it kvp in our dictionary so in this dictionary now we are going to have the customer ID as the key and the customer object itself as the value. Okay, and we are looping through um, each item within the dictionary. So let's say console.write line, we want to print the key and uh, values. So key equals, and how do we get the key from this variable kvp.key should give us that. And then obviously value within the dictionary is a customer object so let's create a customer object and maybe let's call this um, cast equals kvp dot value should return a customer object back and then maybe we want to print their ID name and salary so ID equals a placeholder there Cust dot ID, cust dot name, and finally, cust dot salary. So now, let's run this, and look at that. We get the output. 
So it's very easy to convert an array into a dictionary. Not only array, you can even convert a list of customers. Okay, let's say for example, instead of this customers array, I have a list of customers. So let's create a list of customer. And then obviously to add items to the list, we use add method. So let's call it customers dot add. And let's make a copy of this. So we want to add customer one object, customer two object, and customer three object. Now this customers is actually a list, but we are using essentially the same syntax to convert the list to a dictionary. So if I go ahead and run this now, we should get the same output. All right. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.